hello friends i mean uh, i mean sitting in india right now uh, where the concept of bharat mata and hindu rashtra which is uh, hovering around all the citizens and especially women uh, trans women transgender community queer community of this great country uh, we are facing not only the issue of the increasing fundamentalism and uh, but also the whole corporate power and also the more and more rapid trip to the militarization not only to our country but in the whole south asia region uh, we see that the fundamentalism in fact in the is a in, in the context of cultural religious based fundamentalism power is invariably and most recently uh, easily exercised uh, by targeting women uh as they are the one who are not only on the last ladder but they are the one who are regarded as the have a particular role uh, of the, as a reproducer of the uh, humanity and that's why uh, there is a whole effort to target women through regulation of their uh, bodies sexuality fertility uh, their roles the freedoms and rights are very very clearly demarcated and as we see more and more reduced to a specific very narrow definition of what a good woman can be and this actually um, you know so women's lives are the most uh, circumcised and restricted uh, by the fundamentalist patriarchal agendas um, uh, women are given the role of uh, representing the honor of the country and also custodians of community honor and so they become particularly vulnerable to violence and repression when uh, when they are perceived to be acting outside boundaries set up by the, the forces so as we know that there is a whole concept of bharat mata which is a peripheral which is the, not in the peripheral but in the centrality of the concept of hindu rashtra of the hindu nation this goes beyond the the own simple concept of nationhood because this talks about a particular religion which is the not in only of the ruling party but many of the cultural and socio political organizations and ideology which is a very very regressive right wing ideology they represent where women is no her role is only regarded as a which is reduced to only to her uh, womb where she basically has the role to of producing sons which can not daughters my new producing sons to protect this nation and that's why her womb has to be pure so the whole concept of the aryan bloodhood whether it was run earlier in the whole when we have seen in the holocaust of jews or whether it is there now when there is a whole attack on the muslims and other minority communities in india and other nations we see that that her basically her role is just only reduced to the womb and she has to produce the son and that's why she has to be pure so the whole concept of purity purity and that's why then then the whole concept of control so we can see that there is a whole control of the not only the body what she should be wearing whom she should be talking what are the choices in terms of her sexual identity what are will be her choices in terms of her close intimate relationship including the marriage relationship and that's why this all the laws which are we have seen in a secular constitution we have where um, you know the chief state which i sit in where the chief minister openly challenge the concept of the secularism women's role is more and more restricted so whenever she crosses this boundaries or when she asserts her mind try to take a control of her body then or and her mind then obviously she is completely faces the backlash and that is now actually sanctioned also by the various laws which have been introduced in this country uh, by uh, you know uh, by this particularly hindutva regime so what we can see now that there are this concept called law jihad where uh, the, these are the laws which came where basically restrict women uh, if she marries outside her uh, caste and religion that those marriages which are the uh, completely her choice as a adult woman to exercise her choice our constitution gives her that right to choose her partner to choose her sexual identity but our recent laws and legal changes which are actually illegal but brought in by the so called electoral democratic so we can uh, government act, then actually criminalizes the actions which are these choices 
and then there is a backlash the woman i'm in arrested there is a whole effort of purifying her so there is a whole concept of ghar vapsi that she can come back to the fold and she needs to be purified there are these more and more restrictions not only put up by the government but by the society at large and the families which are now seeing the pressure with that allowing not allowing girls young girls to exercise these big choices so in all the relationship this also matters only not only in terms of you know what are the interfaith uh, marriages or the intimate relationship it also happens whenever you know i mean this recently two days back another chief minister of another right wing state rule go government uh, state said that the girls who wear and the women who wear the ripped jeans uh, is not a sanskari a cultured person this is not our culture this is not our indian culture so she is just reduced to what she wears how she speaks about what you know whether she smokes whether she drinks it is accepted it is regarded that the girl who wears um, uh, clothes which are according to her choices are not the sarees or covering her whole body a uh, body is a impure girl she is not a good girl she is not a good daughter in law and that's that's how all the choices whether it's a terms of and that's why there is a whole restriction also of the use of let's take it to the further even to the use of the mobile phone because it is regarded that the girls exercising their choices getting out of the house will be uh, you know she will get into the other relationship she will start speaking her mind she will need, need not be educated so there are restriction in terms of her education and in terms of her realizing her potential in terms of her movement so all mobilities are also extremely restricted so there is a, and then we see there is also at the same time because she is supposed to actually hold the honor because she is basically the boom of not only of a particular i mean her own womb so she completely loses her control over her bodily integrity because um, and then there is also at the same time we uh, see and that's why she need to be protected from the outsiders that the whole concept and the one of the way to protect her from the outsider to restrict her mobility not allow her to um, get into the you know more and more into educational opportunity or get into the job market or getting into exercising her mind because that was the fear and that's why you, we can see also the rise in the early marriages uh, you know at the at this moment the law is said that there won't be a child marriage so there may not be because legally child marriages are less but there is a early marriage because she need to be protected and she need to be handed over to the another man who can protect her from the other um you know elements and impure elements and that's the whole understanding of it at the same time there is also uh, you know controlling there is a increasing sexual violence against the ethnic minority group we are seeing that in our neighboring country uh, uh, myanmar where we are seeing the militarization is uh, i mean the military coup which is happening there and we have seen also in the our uh, parts whether it's a kashmir or in the our northeast region where or chatisgarh in the conflict zone where rape is been used actually as a, a mode to control women sexuality and actually subvert her so there is a increasing violence not only against the muslims but also against tribals ethnic minorities in kashmir in northeast in chatisgarh and we are seeing that it's a, uh, it's also used as a mode to control during the riots uh during the nationalist tendencies we have seen what has happened in the gujarat program where the womb of a pregnant woman was uh, kausar jahan was ripped open say and saying that we will kill her and there is also increasing rapes saying that we will actually impure and will ensure that only you will bear a hindu son so a hindu man seed is planted in your body so her body becomes the whole carrier of honor and which are these are the practice and that increasingly also leads to the practice of honor killing and where the community literally comes out and say we did it because finally the community gives a is a false um, uh, you know state of identity which is a completely false narrative of building on the whole socio cultural identity and they are honoring the nation and that their responsibility to protect the nation and that obviously leads to the more um, you know there is a violation of lgbt right there are marriages so all we can see um, which is happening and this is whole part of the whole patriarchy so we see actually patriarchy in the midst of the fundamentalism and also this has happened because of the increasing globalization at the same time if we see after the covid 19 there are more and more women 
uh, are completely almost 83 percent of women out of the labor force because not only because there is no economic chances but also the woman need to be controlled and she needs to be you know out the she the first person through his pronoun so there is a complete uh, pauperization there is a complete marginalization and we can see that in the whole trade union the recent labor laws which were so i'll just take it to the whole corporate how it is linked you know the whole corporate and globalization agenda is also linked to the whole concept of the you know the fundamentalism that actually when the recent labor courts which are introduced in india reduces the you know the working uh, the increases the working hours there is a more unequal pay uh, there are lesser and lesser uh, social security um, uh, uh, umbrella is that actually restricted we have seen in our recent budget where the whole uh, you know the budget for the women's uh, uh, empowerment was drastically reduced and the funds which were created especially to handle the uh, sexual violence of women were had seen the 100% cut down in the fund allocation so we see that there is a increasing corporatization and globalization also at the same time reduces her access and uh you know the control over not only over the resources which she loses because of the displacement i come from the movement which is against the uh, you know to uh, work against the big dam and we have seen how the displacement has not only led to the pauperization but it has pushed many women uh, to become a migrant and got into the sex work uh, they were literally forced to uh, go into the sex work and there is a more exploitation on the workplace there is a lack of education health there is a, also the all the basic entitlement becomes more and more privatized so whether it's a water whether it's a food whether it's a these are the basic social security and basic entitlement guaranteed by any constitution but as they become more privatized and and because of the privatization and because of the corporatization they become more and more expensive and out of the reach especially of the rural indigenous people migrant people and the women of all these communities you know this finally who do not have access and do not have any resources to actually then claim those private uh, those entitlement because they have now become privatized and they have become only a property of very lucky few and the women are generally out of it and that also we see that that is the whole effect of the you know the whole corporatization so we see actually patriarchy which is actually uh, used you know uh, the basic patriarchal understanding is not only of the basis of the fundamentalism but also of the issue of the increasing corporatization where women are completely thrown out and her bodies have become more and more her she has to be are violated and she also loses the access and that's why we see there is a whole you know the huge um, gap and uh, among the also when you are looking at the whole digital divide this year especially after covid and the digital divide when the digitalization has also led to the more uh, you know the exclusive class we have seen girls dropping out of the school what will that mean the girls dropping out of the school will be her completely lose her track of her you know access to the education to realize her full potential she will be forced to get into the force and early marriages bear the children which are not a uh, body because her body is just the womb so she has to bear the children to protect the nation and her own choices and her own life is completely violated including her bodily integrity so we see there is a whole link between the fundamentalism patriarchy and the globalization and we think that the fundamentalism and corporatization are actually um, uh, you know the side of the two sides of the same coin and patriarchy is anywhere in the world is the basis actually these are the forces which are used this is the basic uh, foundation on which these two sources also establish and finally it Uh, leads to the we having no women everywhere as uh, you know her voice her agency is completely eroded so uh, so i uh, this is a very serious issue and we are seeing that increasingly happening in not only in india but in all the region and we also seeing it is happening in in the um, you know the so called developed world whether, whether there is a attack on the asian uh, people which has happened just two days back in uh, us or where the because they are looked at somebody as the other and especially woman who is taking my job who is a impure person who is walking on the road having her own mind are uh, attacked and violated and we are seeing that's all over happening in the in uh, world and especially in the countries like ours which are seeing the right wing ideology uh, taking over which has already taken over and it's uh, 
on the whole their dream of the right wing ideology of the hindu rashtra where woman is actually shackled in the house and only her completely her mind and body is violated in fact you know i mean the issue is that when where, wherever women have been violated women have risen again and again we rise from the ashes i think and uh, so we you see that uh, in spite of uh, this um, uh, you know attack on the thing we can see the women who are taking the bold uh, role uh, uh, not only in um, uh, uh, you know the movements i mean you have seen what is happening in the farmers movement right now in the right now in india where farmers movement is very led by the women in fact it is for the first time it not only their physical uh, presence out there but it's also um, you know they're actually deciding the discourse which is the extremely important thing i think which is happening right now uh, it is also happening that um, uh, in many of the movement and especially also in the where there have been attack uh, we have seen the two three movements in last two three years there are two three movements which has actually been a very powerful um, uh, symbols of the how women have been challenging this discourse of right wing where her sexuality her boil, uh, bodies her mind is challenged and violated is the whole protest which were led by the muslim women and joined by the other women also started from the shine bag to all over thousands of shine bag which emerged all over india and were women stepped out of their houses and took control of the roads because they said if you push, push us more and more towards in the houses we will come and claim the public spaces the whole effort of uh, you know uh, taking out the public places is another you know which is uh, we have seen which is happening in shine bag which is seeing in farmers movement with a very strong vibrant movement happening in india and it is in fact whether whenever there is the whole misogamy where there is a attack whether verbally or physically is the women from all over which has come forward whether it has come in gujarat whether it has happened in shine bag whether it has happened in farmers movement and many movements also in the north east where we have been led with the whole north east the whole movement against the apsa against the arms act started by manorama and her friend where the women came out and took up their clothes and you can rape us but you can never rape and silence our spirit so whether it's a north east where the kashmiri women who are leading from the forefront where there are women from every uh, you know the labor unions we have, have the uh, uh, labor activists who like navdeep who came out who went to jail and her she was violated the day she uh, came out they, she was again on the farmer struggle talking of the unity of the labor and the farmers movement so there are women challenging is battle is becoming more and more uh, difficult but we are aware and i think there is a much more unity much more reaching out to each other there is a, there was a time in 80s and 90s when we were growing up basically women's movement and the whole ideas were restricted only to the urban india not any more we have seen women fighting whether in narmada whether in niyamgiri we are talking about their control over their commons over their resources in the whole forest act where women are gathering they say we are farmers we are the forest producers we are the gatherers and we have every rights over these resources is those voices are coming over from shine bra from the farmers movement from the north east from the kashmir and for an after that i think after 30 40 years of a vibrant women struggle we there is a first time the women from uh, urban rural all areas from the conflict zone everybody is reaching out to each other and there is a much more unity we have been actually a join and we are very proud that the comrades of the queer community the trans community who have joined the movement the women from the dalits and bahujan uh, communities which are not talking to each other and we are not looking for the artificial boundaries of upper caste women and the lower caste women and in fact there is a more more dialogue there is a more reaching out holding hand because as a woman as a queer people community people as a trans people we all know that we have to stand united so you can see and we think that the whole coming struggle the leadership is taken over by women and i'm sure only a feminine feminist a uh, struggle which talks not only, not only of feminist principle but also talks about the equality equity justice liberty freedom will lead this country uh, to the freedom and to the access to justice